So this is how I went about drawing the cross section of this wing. So we'll start with a sketch on the right hand side. Because of the symmetry of the part, I'll draw a center line for the wing. And I'll draw an arc centered at the origin. We'll bring it out. And note that between the origin and the center of the metal, it's a radius of 0.5 meters. So I'll come back, I'll set it to meters, make sure it's at meters here. I'll dimension the arc at 0.5 meters. And then I'll draw a couple of lines for the balance of the wing. And I need a distance of 2 meters from the origin to the back of the wing and uh, 0.25 meters for the height of this line. And to smooth out this section, I'll click these two parts and I'll do a tangent relationship between the two and it smooths out the arc into the line. So I'll click Mirror Entities and I'll click the two parts, or the three parts, and I'll say let's mirror it about the center line and click OK. Do we need to find the area of this part? And note that it's the area uh, between uh, enclosed by the center line of this sheet metal. So I'll come back, I've sketched out the center line already. I'll go Tools and Section Properties, click that, and it defaults to Sketch 4, but I can click Sketch 4 if I have multiple sketches. Click Recalculate. In the area within that part, I calculate an area of 1.9 square meters. So let's create the thickness of the part. Note that it's uh, 10 millimeters on a side, so between the center line, I'll go out 5 millimeters. So I'll come back here, click Offset Entities, and I'm set at 5 millimeters. I've, I'm making the base. Uh, I'll make the base construction because it has no real value for the final part. I've also said select chain so that I can select the chain of all of these lines. And I'll make the, uh, I'll also click bidirectional so when I zoom in on this preview it's going to offset it in both directions from the center of my part. So I'll click OK here and zoom back out. What it's done is here's my construction line now and it's offset the thickness of the part. And if I move these dimensions away, the, it's set to, in the document, it's set to report two significant figures. So I can go up here, uh, Options, I'll go Document Properties, and under Dimensions, I'll select Primary Positions. Let's just show three significant figures so we can see that it's indeed uh, five millimeters on either side. So I zoom back in, it shows me the, the dimensions between the construction line and the surface of the wing. So let's extrude, we'll extrude about the center line. We'll go mid-plane here, and the part that I want to extrude is that face in there. I'll stretch it out, and this will give me the, uh, the part. I'll click OK, and note that for this uh, particular problem, we'll make the wing uh, some arbitrary length. I'll make it long enough so that we can avoid end effects. When we run the simulation, we'll fix the left face of this wing, and the right wing will want to apply a torque. And one thing we need to know is about what axis should we apply the torque. So I propose that we do it uh, along this region here. We could, you could imagine the spar of the wing might be right within here. So to do that, I'll make this, this sketch visible so we can see it. And then I'll go uh, Reference Geometry Axis, and I'll choose this point, the origin and we'll make it perpendicular to this face up here. Click OK on that. I can draw it, extend it outward just to see it a little bit better. And now when I zoom around, that axis is uh, right down where the spar of the wing might be. So let's run the simulation, a new study, and fixed, uh, I'll do a fixed geometry on the back face of it. So zoom in here and click that. And then about this face, we'll apply a torque. So we'll go external loads, a torque, and I'll select. Let's apply the torque to this face right here. And then for the axis, I'll choose this axis. So that's applying a counterclockwise torque about that face. So I'll, I'll right click the part, apply material. And let's do aluminum. And I'll choose, choose whatever material you want. I'll choose a 6061 alloy and apply that. So let's create a mesh. I can right click here and say create mesh and it turns out for a part like this it's so fine that we need to get uh, a few nodes within that sheet metal. So I usually go with a bit finer mesh and I don't want to go too fine or it'll take a long time. And now under mesh parameters I'll dial this back, this minimum value for the mesh here. It allows for a little bit tighter spacing of the nodes and I'll click OK. 
And that took about 12 seconds on my machine to make the mesh. So I'll go up here, click Run. And that took a little over 30 seconds on my machine to make the part. Note that the deformation of this part with a one newton meter uh, torque on the edge of the wing, of course the wing won't look like this if it's sheet metal. So I'll go, I'll right click and edit definition and we'll go true scale on the deformation of the wing. And that shows very little deformation, but I can uh, show the von Mises stress along the uh, surface of the wing. And what we're interested in here is a factor of safety plot. So I right click results factor of safety and we use an automatic detection for the failure of the part. It'll probably be useful to change the color of the scale. So I'll right click factor of safety uh, plot, go chart options, and at the bottom I'll go color options. And let's make this user defined. It's a little bit hard to interpret rainbows. So we'll go, we'll make three colors and Let's call this one red. The center color for intermediate values will make it white. And then for upper values, let's make them blue. It's just a little bit easier to interpret the plot. And recall that things with a factor, a low factor of safety tend to be closer to failure. In this case, we're looking at very large factors of safety. This wing is not going to fail because of the torque I applied. I'll go over, it might be easier to see uh, uh, floating uh, values for the factor of safety and then drop the number of significant figures down. The red, uh, we tend to associate red with a problem in the area or a low factor of safety. Of course here it's you know, over 13,000 the factor of safety. But let's go, let's pretend that the low end, we'll say the, give the low end a factor of safety of zero and the upper end we'll call, I don't know, 15,000. We don't really care anything higher than that. I'll click OK and this is a little bit easier to interpret I think the factor of safety of 15,000 is clear in the blue I don't see any anything red anything even remotely close to uh, being a problem because that torque is so low